Yo, what's going on? What's going on, man? Nothing much, man. How's everything going over in Columbus? Oh, it's going great. The weather is hot. It's like 90 degrees. Kind of really? remember, like reminds me about Florida, but yeah. it's not as humid, obviously. No. But yeah, it's, That's what? the worst, man. The humid, the humid yes. humidity. That's a yeah. double, it's double humid. <laughs> you walk outside and it's like you're already, you showered, you're all good. Yeah. You walk outside, you start sweating again. It's terrible. Yeah. But we no, it's go- sunny out. Oh, I'm sorry. What's up? The pool, the pool is that place where we would go dry off. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it doesn't even matter. You might as well just like walk outside and go everywhere you need to in a swimsuit, which many people around Melbourne did anyway. <laughs> yeah. The grocery stores was the weirdest with people in no shoes or shirt walking around in the grocery store. I'm like, hmm, okay. Well, and, and that's the thing. I don't know. It's probably just because we were raised like more up yeah. north. Like I, I could never find myself being able to do that even though I kind of wanted to, but it was just like, no, it's just, you're walking to the grocery store. I'm going to have my shoes on, at least a shirt on. But. Yeah. I thought it was illegal. <laughs> I literally thought like sanitation wise, cause there's like people, I remember, I don't know, I was watching some documentary and the guy was cutting up chicken and uh, pork and beef yeah. from his grass fed ranch. He was doing it all outside in nature and they classified him as having, of being like unsanitary. And he's like, measure any of the actual um contaminants in my meat there's nothing no yeah. pesticides there's nothing he's like you go take anybody else's he was saying numbers i don't know the numbers right and he was like they have all this shit in them i'm just doing it outside in nature where the where the things are actually fucking from exactly and they're probably not even like taking into account like all the people even just touching the food like uh-uh. like everyone touches the apples and puts oh them my back god yeah <laughs> like, eh. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Lick a little bit. No, nah, this is yeah. mm, mm, Ooh, not ripe enough. <laughs> let me try a couple of strawberries. But yeah, man, Columbus has been great. It's been sunny, so that's awesome. How's how's Michigan? Or yeah, yeah you're in Michigan right now. Yeah. I know you've been hopping back and forth in yeah. Chi Town and all that stuff. Dude, I'm gonna go after this. My parents are having a Memorial Day uh, boat party, so I'm about to go to that. Nice, so they, nice. Do a little uh, little laying out on the beach. That's gonna be good. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm gonna be making my wings, my signature wings tonight. Trent, Trent's, so. Trent's money wings. Exactly. Oh, they're Coop. so good. They're so good. So yeah, let's dive into it. Before Trent was the wing cooker, living in Columbus, <laughs> he used to be a actually a scrawny guy. Um, yeah. He was born with no no big arms. Um, he spent most of <laughs> no his beginning years still skinny. I mean, you were skinny. You weren't like a lot of people get heavier and a lot of times that's why they start to pursue fitness. But on the other hand, you were just not the shape you wanted to be, didn't have the mm-hmm. physicality. And what was your nickname? What do people call you sometimes? Oh, so many things. String bean, uh, ecti, ecti, it's short for ectomorph, like ectomorph, that body type that's more like a fragile, skinny, tall frame. Uh, my buddy Jordan used to call me ecti, which was short for ectomorph. And uh, that always stuck. But yeah, and then there's like, you know, bean pole, and uh there's so many things and yeah. they usually didn't bother me but we'll dive in in a moment to like more of the deeper things i was gonna yeah. let you finish like your intro a little bit no totally man oh I mean, yeah we could just dive in because you went from that to now where uh you're doing rope climbs with one arm behind the back no i'm joking uh, but you're doing rope up. Climbs easy up yeah i mean handstand push-ups freestanding and you know all together the fast mm-hmm. metabolism signature of like when me and Carter with you were like Trent just eats whatever he's literally like yeah. <laughs> eating the most out of everybody and he's just shredded oh, damn all right I'm excited like you literally opened up so many different doors because I feel like there's levels and things build upon everything so yeah going all the way back super skinny and this was back in like the high middle school high school days you know freshman year I was actually starting to get like bullied and teased and everything like that but I I was always like an active kid like always out rollerblading more outdoorsy stuff like I wasn't I always like to spend my time outdoors like you know roller skating skateboarding building bikes taking them apart you know painting them all that stuff and um, I was outside running around but probably living on gallons of iced tea and Pringles pretty much you know because me and my buddies would just get all that food from a gas station hit the skate park and just you know skate away all day and night Um, so then after that it's like I was starting to get like teased and bullied in, in middle school a lot. And it was something still easy to cover up. 
you know, and we're going to like hop right into like more of the deeper stuff because, you know, I went through like a series of like depression for a little bit moving into like middle school. And that was probably like the biggest thing that started to push me into like wanting to change. Cause like all the, like the, the nicknames and stuff like that, like that never got to me, but whenever it, like it got like a little physical, like I remember like on the bus sometimes, like I would get picked on like, you know, the older kids in like the grade above, like that were still like, um, I, you know, I was like the youngest, they were yeah, always yeah. about to go to the next one, like that whole, you know, the, the, yeah. the fuck boys <laughs> kind of thing. Exactly. And, and uh, so they all like steal my book bag on the bus and all that stuff. And I'll never forget the one day where it was like three of them, they were tossing my book bag, like in the triangle. And every time I would like go to the person with the bag, they would throw it to the other one and I uh, could never get it, but they were getting off the bus. And I, I was just, like, I gave up. I sat back in my seat. Yeah. I was like, I didn't need the schoolwork anyway. And, uh, and then all of a sudden um, the one kid just throws the bag and it hits me in the head and I smash my head into the, like the oh. divider, like they're plastic windows, but then they're the divider of like the metal part. My head hit that, but I had like long curly hair. I used to slick it back with gel and all that stuff. And uh, no one really like saw the mark. And uh, that's whenever things like really started to like yeah. hit to me. And which now knowing, um, it's funny how I can look back on this now and probably like, I probably had so many nutrient deficiencies. Like if I'm just like wow. drinking iced tea and Pringles, I think those kind of deficiencies led to that kind of depression. I think that's what a lot of people also yeah. suffer from as well. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I got into fitness for those reasons. Um, and of course, like, even if you have goals of like, just wanting to look better, no, that, that's completely okay. <clears throat> it's something like to get the ball rolling. And, um, I just fell into like the typical like mainstream yeah. fitness magazines, you know, like um, the guys on steroids and you just follow their workout routine on like bodybuilding.com or like some men's health magazine. Yeah. Um, it's great and all like those routines are structured, but you know, the guys aren't natural. And uh, in the mainstream advice, like if you're super skinny and like you do everything you can not to gain weight, you have to eat like so many calories. Oh my God. And I think that, it led up to the point like my depression got so bad that I had thoughts of just, you know, suicide to be quite honest, you know, never like attempted or anything, but the thoughts were there. Like it got mm -hmm. that bad. And that was that biggest like push to like, okay, I'm going to go all in on this thing because it was like, I felt what else did I have? And fitness was like that lowest hanging yeah. fruit that I can just grab and like seeing people make these transformations. And like, I'm a firm believer, like if you can like put in the effort and stay consistent, actually get results, like that can yeah. carry over into other areas of your life as well. Um, so like that push and that like awakening, this was around like seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, seventh grade. And uh, that push like really made me like go all in, like all or nothing, going like all in on those magazine yeah. and like weird mainstream fitness. So like my protein, I was doing like, you know, 250 grams a day and my calories Okay, so this is like, it goes from super skinny, following mainstream advice, and yeah. then going to the extreme where I went from about 125 pounds at almost six feet tall. So I was like, I was really skinny looking, like people even questioned that I had like an eating disorder at times, because it was like, really? that scary. yeah, and it was like, so I was like, all that leading out my thoughts and just wanting a change in my life, I went all in and I was eating like no less than 4000 calories a day like that was I almost had like a I couldn't go below that yeah. right so like every single day I was trying to get above that and then a funny note another thing I'll never forget is one day I hit like 6,200 calories I should do not <laughs> and I was making, I was making the most disgusting weight gain shakes like raw eggs oats which I just didn't know how to do because like I didn't cook them yeah. at all and like I was trying to put them in the blender it just didn't work made it, and then like with a peanut butter and like protein it made it like so foamy and I was trying to like gulp it down as my last thing I had to eat that day and as soon as I finished it I threw up all over myself you know I'm not trying <laughs> to go like, disgusting totally, on the podcast but it just it, it's some weird things that I did yeah man because like I, I was so into this so I was, I went from like 125 pounds and then two years of staying consistent, of eating no less than 4,000 calories a day. And that also like impacted my social life and all that stuff. Cause I didn't want, I was afraid I was going to mess up my um, results and, I, totally. and we'll, we'll get to that yeah. in a moment. So I pretty much went from 125 pounds all the way up to around like 190 pounds, but I was just doing like supersets, giant sets, whatever, just pumping up my muscles yeah. because that's what the, you know, the mainstream was telling me to Muscle do. So infection. Like, Exactly. So I gained a lot of mass, but most of that was obviously body fat. And since I had like such a skinny frame, I didn't look like I was overweight, but yeah. I was like, 
I think you saw the pictures. I, I had to oh, find yeah. them somewhere, but it's like, I, I didn't have abs, but I was just like soft and puffy. And then like, you know, just following like, oh, if it, it's, if it fits your macros kind of deal without actually looking into the food quality, which now I know of and going back to like, totally. why I probably was like depressed and everything. Like my digestion was complete shit, literally. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I had acne, um, you know, trouble sleeping and all that stuff. And it got to a point where like, is this what I wanted? It's like, that's not what I wanted at all. Like, why are these results? No. That's the thing. But I, I think it was a hard lesson learned because I feel like if anything, most people have trouble like actually starting something yeah. and actually staying consistent long enough to actually see results. So it's like, I truly found out that that wasn't the way. <laughs> um, and then that was also like a funny point where um, since I got so big, in the two years, I was in high school at this time. And then everyone's like, oh, Trent, like you're so big, like you should, you should play football and all that stuff and the normal um, route yes exactly like high school and this yep. and, and that's a, that's another thing too where it was uh let, let's plant the seed a little bit later because it was <laughs> almost like I, I was i was i was letting everyone else's thoughts yes. and what they felt was best for me just like you know influence me and to i was just almost just walking through life not yeah. really doing things i truly like wanted to do myself yeah so that, let's, I mean, let's real quick let's unpackage you dude you just there's oh, there's so much goodness and what I, I know. I know. There's there's the thing like you get me going, I start going on. I know, videos. dude. And I yeah, love let's it. Take, yeah, uh, let's, let's take a let's take a step back. So, sure. <laughs> one of the things is, well, th these kind of go together, and I think a lot of people don't realize that aesthetics doesn't mean health. Yes. Yes. Um, I know Paul Check likes to say fit sick people. Yes. And there's so much of that. I would, I would say the majority of people who look good aren't healthy yes. because the majority of people aren't healthy. And 100%. I mean, it comes down to exactly what you were saying. You're eating Pringles and iced tea. You're almost on that little Wayne diet, eating all the candy. <laughs> <laughs> I know he eats like tons of candy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing too. Like uh, we'll talk about nutrition in a second, but I love Paul Chuck and even like a, a big info, Eater Portel, on, yeah. like his views on like, in the fitness space, it's like people are reverse engineering that aesthetics physique. It's like people can look awesome, but like they lack the functionality behind exactly. it. You know, they look great, but then on top of the health, it's almost like that is a big eye opener to be like, oh, that isn't what I truly want. But now like I can kind of complete the whole package essentially. Dude, that's, that's one of the biggest things. I mean, you can figure out how to get a good bicep. You can put the muscle under tension. You can do all this stuff. But one thing I was just listening to Ben Greenfield actually talk about was muscle quality. And that's you know, something that yes. people don't actually think about is like it, with everything. And of course, quality over quantity, you don't, mm -hmm. okay. Big muscles is one thing, but people with big muscles, one are proven to not live as long, who yep. have, contain more muscle mass. But those studies only are like that because the quality of their muscle isn't good. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a good quality of muscle, then you're not like in a scarce, scarcity type feel where you're snacking on your muscles because it's a readily available fuel source. Right. Or even, but, even the fact that, um, sorry to interrupt, like yeah, um, yeah. you can have big biceps, but like what's a big bicep if you can't move it around or if it's not loose and you have tons of calcium deposits and all that. Yeah. And even like whenever I, I got, I put on some muscle, obviously in my efforts of that skinny kind of transformation, but like what happens whenever I had to like move, I don't know, furniture or something yeah. like that. I, I suffered because all I was doing was like curling and like just all these isolation movements, obviously some compound stuff, but it like it, there was so much lacking to an oh, overall yeah. like balanced physique that's going to actually like take you through life in the best way possible. Yeah. And you were saying that the aesthetics was something that you had control over when you were thinking about like all the things in your life that you have control over. Yes. And I, th I think that's one of the hardest things. And it's something that we so often like don't teach people is like you want to have the control of anything. And of right. course, like start with the smallest thing that you can control. And once you know that you can control it and it feels good and you can do the next thing, then it's right. good. I do. I do want to say, cause I'm reading this book right now. Um, Solve for happy. And he talks about, we don't actually have control over anything yeah. when it comes to like how everything works. Yeah. But you have the ability to set your, yourself up for success or not. So eating right, being taught that, teaching your kids that, doing all that stuff, especially with depression and suicide. I want to mm -hmm. say 
ninety percent of people, and that might be super high and out of uh, range, think at one point about suicide. Yeah, and it, I want to say it's there. There has to be something there. Yeah, <laughs> it. I I don't think suicide. It's like when you stand at a tall building and you go, "Fuck, I could like literally jump." Yeah. Like I know everybody thinks that the body has a natural mechanism to fall forward when it's really high up. I think it's just like one, it's the unknown, but two, like when we don't own everything, like that extreme ownership concept, Mm -hmm. then a lot of times we just don't want to own literally anything. And so the easiest way to get out is what you see everywhere, which is suicide. But with that extreme ownership concept, that leads to what happened with you next. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on. You touched on a really good point too, because it's um, starting small because taking a step back, it's like people are trying to make these changes, but change requires energy to do that and then with that it's like they're coming in like maybe like they're dehydrated they're nutrient deficient Mm -hmm. and they're not sleeping you know and they're trying to like all of a sudden do everything they can to have let's just say a a perfect fitness plan and they can't stick to it because they have all these other things going on all these other stressors that's why starting small and making that smallest change until you feel comfortable can then open the doors up to then making the next change they build and build upon like even if it's just like eating fruit once a day, it's like that could maybe get more nutrients into your body. So you start to have more energy and feel yeah. better and sleep better and all that stuff too. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. It's not that you have to ever start correctly, but start, just do exactly. one thing. And then, yeah. I mean, over time you learn, of course, like everybody packages up all this BS. Like we all go to the gym, we try too hard, we end up ruining our posture and whatever. But Mm-mm. if you start smaller and you learn on the way and you have that intellectual honesty, then mm-hmm. that is when like, it doesn't matter. You just need to start now and you'll be able to correct later. But going back to the extreme ownership thing, that's, I, I think, so you gained all this weight mm-hmm. and then you realize that it wasn't the weight that you wanted. Mm-hmm. You're being pushed into football and yes. then something changed. Yes. I'm going to pause you for a minute because I think you also, you dropped another amazing nugget too about lacking control. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people do feel like they have a lack of control and they just turn to food to that a lot nowadays. And like, that's a thing a lot of people and something that I want to make an effort talking about is those deeper emotions, those unresolved emotions that people don't know how to deal with, or maybe afraid to deal with. And it's tough. It's really tough going down there and dealing with those quote unquote demons because it's so easy nowadays to turn to something like alcohol or drugs or go into Netflix or not go into Netflix, watching Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be I crazy. Go to, Netflix go, to Netflix. Go. go to Netflix and chill. They got beds and shit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Little dividers up. <laughs> but uh, it, it's so easy to turn to those things because it's that's much easier than going deep and like fulfilling those unresolved emotions. Yeah. And uh, that's why, the, and obviously the biggest thing to turn to is food to get that control. But then you dive into all like the wrong foods and then, you know, you mess up everything. Like even your gut, yeah, you've got microbiome to even get like a little deeper. And then all of a sudden you might be just craving the wrong foods. And it's just, that's why everything gets into a crazy whack and it all comes back to making the smallest change to actually keep growing on the levels. And then you can, yeah, like I was saying at the very beginning of the podcast, it all builds. Oh yeah. Unpause going back so gained all this weight <laughs> like like like, like I, I thought like whatever i unpause I, you had to like speed up the catch oh. up me. you like moved around <laughs> so yeah i gained a bunch of weight people were really pushing me to um play football and all that like even uh the girl i was dating at the time like the whole idea of having like you know she was a cheerleader and you know i could be that football player and it was like that ideal scenario and all that stuff and that sounded cool to me but it wasn't like it wasn't like what I truly wanted to do. But anyway, I went to football with absolutely no experience <laughs> like whatsoever. Cause like, you know, kids start, like, when did you start playing football? Oh, young, right? Mm, I know you play grade, for a little bit. Seventh grade. Yeah. Like, like the Cubs or something like that. Is it called the Cubs? No. Uh, something. I think it was in was my like hometown, hometown, it was called the Cubs. I don't know. Honestly, I don't want to sound too ridiculous of my life. Maybe it was a Hawk. I don't know. So I don't really, I don't remember. I'm a different person. <laughs> yeah exactly so i started playing football and like i ran track a little bit too in high school because surprisingly enough I, I can sprint pretty fast so i love doing that um did the hurdles too my long legs all that you know six foot tall you know get some got some reach but um 
then I was like, okay, I'll just like sign up for running back in football. It's like, where, where do you see a six foot tall running back? No, <laughs> nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. But I didn't know any better. And uh, everyone else, they were like, okay, like you could try out for it. I did that for like the first year and just got wrecked. Just got completely oh, destroyed. Yeah. Like, and I didn't even like have the right football cleats. cleats so I had like a, a crazy blister infection that like ran all the way back up my calf, had to mm. get that dealt with, uh, had fractured ribs. Um, definitely had a concussion that went like unchecked all that, you know, it was just torturous, but then through like, all, what's that? It's the normal football stuff. I mean, exactly. It's literally, it kills people like Mm -hmm. football, maybe not now, but when you think 20, 30, 40 years out, like it does. And it's, doesn't matter who's saying what, like head trauma repeated kids (laughs) running directly into each other as fast as they can is not smart. And if you'll do that with the wall, then may, that's fine. mainly like I don't think I'm wrong by saying this, but because they have a helmet on, they dive head first into yeah, that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like even at least like rugby, I think they're a little bit smarter with yeah, I mean, you're stuff still, like that. But it's still, still cool and out. all that stuff. Like even yeah, just so many things. Like we were talking about this a while ago, like even on a jet ski or something on the water, yeah, it can cause like bouncing. a little bit of just juggling around in there. So messed up a lot of things yeah so the first year was like running back got destroyed but through like all the football camps like the two a days like I think we weren't allowed to do three days but we did them anyway because we weren't too good that year or something like that but it was literally like 6 a.m to 7 p.m at night you know out there in the sun running like crazy lifting weights and uh this that whole thing which the programming was a little off (laughs) obviously you know like like they could have set it up so much better to like create like these monster athlete athletes you know i'm not speaking for every school i'm just speaking for my personal i would say most schools unless you're going to one of those serious football schools that's a high school has no idea what they're doing when it comes to programming because they have a coach who doesn't do anything that is related to being a coach except for the 10 minutes when he goes and he tells the kids to run head first into each other. Yeah, exactly. They know the football, but they don't know the programming. But anyway, I lost a ton of weight doing all that. And that was from like around 190 and just pretty much just all fat, a little, obviously a little bit of muscle because I did get stronger. It was just like mm-hmm. just the fact of the matter, but um, I could have done it so much better than those bodybuilding magazines. But I lost so much weight and went all the way back down to, I think it was around like 147, like 150 kind of thing so like that kind of wrecked me like even though I I didn't like where I was it's like I thought that was at least some kind of progress that I wasn't being called skinny or anything like that I thought I was getting my shit together and uh, so I lost a lot of weight and then like going into the second year of football that would have been my senior year of high school I was like no like and obviously like being the senior year of high school you know college was coming up yeah and I was like what am I gonna like I was starting to like what am I gonna do with my life kind of thing and I was like is football really serving me I was like no I'll never forget the day whenever I was quitting and the coach was like, oh, you're just not going to be successful in life because you don't have football and you're quitting this. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> you know, I'm out. <laughs> it's yeah, like, for real, like, you. you're going to like tell a kid that in high school, it's like, that's not going to, you know, sit well in their mind, you know, if they mm-hmm. weren't so, you know, if they aren't so, you know, thoughtful of that, it hurts. It can definitely yeah. mess with you. I mean, <laughs> you're like literally what your teachers and all the people growing up say to you, like completely creates your identity. Yeah, it completely shapes like all your past experiences, yeah. and it's like yeah, ton of limits. When you assholes that. like that, who's now like, I gotta reform my formation. I don't know who's playing where. Okay, <laughs> well maybe if it's that hard for you to do it, someone else should be doing it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So ended up quitting football, and with that extra time, I was like trying to like I was like, well, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I had like a little bit of interest in business. So I was trying to get that together, you know, learning my ways and, you know, ins and outs around that. And uh, just like, I, I kind of fell into like the online marketing kind of thing, you know, yeah. like the whole, like I'll admit like the whole Vima verve kind of thing. Yeah. Like I did that back in the high school days and oh I got, I wish I did it, but you know, it's like, yeah. I wanted, I always had like an idea of like running my own business. Like even like while I was, um, making that first transformation, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll talk about how I got um, a job at a a restaurant on purpose so I can get more food to eat. But I was also cutting grass around the neighborhood and I had grass cutting clients all the way up and down the street, you know? So I was like, I was making money that way. So like having my own business was always like, you know, in my thoughts, even though like I was like kind of just going with the flow with a lot of things. So that's whenever I quit football, I was like, all right, I got to focus on that. 
But then I was like, ah, oh, like after the whole like online marketing thing, I was like, oh, maybe this, I got the wrong idea about business essentially. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so I was like, well, I got college coming up and everyone's telling me to go to college. So I will be successful in life and that whole deal. And, um, I think that was like more of the spark of like starting to think for myself and everything. But then I was like, with all that free time and kind of putting like the whole business thing to the side, I was like, well, I still really want to achieve the fitness results that I set out to achieve mm-hmm. a couple of years ago. And that's whenever I was like, there has to be some other way because people like people look the way that I wanted to look in the past. And I ended up stumbling upon Greg O'Gallagher from Kino Body and uh, like years and years before like Kino Body was where it's at today. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I, this guy like literally had the look I wanted and uh, he had some workups, workouts and blogs that I started to follow. And then he had a transformation contest. So it was a three month muscle building contest. And I was like, well, it was free to enter and you just had to have one of his programs, the Greek God program. So I bought that and I followed it for three months and I actually only put on like six to eight pounds of muscle, but his whole philosophy of adding, you know, creating the Hollywood look and effectively adding that muscle, um, smart, strategic and everything. Um, you can make a, you know, night and day difference on how you look. So it wasn't that muscle gained that much muscle gained, but I won first place in that contest and won a thousand dollars. And I was like, Holy shit. Well, this is just going to prom and college payments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, what, what's that? I mean, that's when I first, so this is my first encounter with Trent. Cause I was yeah, I also a, uh, in doing the program, saw the contest, signed up for the contest, saw this guy win. And I was like, there's no way that happened in three months. We'll, <laughs> so there back, was we'll come back to that. We'll come back to it, but keep going. Oh no. Yeah. That was, that was pretty much, I was waiting for us to, to finally merge on like when we first like came across Same. each other. Exactly. So I was like, well, like I still like, and over those years, like I did, like I was very fond of like all the fitness things. Like actually whenever I started to get results, like I loved it and all that. And I was like, you know what, like after this transformation, and then I started to have like some friends and family that needed help, like with mm-hmm. coaching and everything. So I started helping them out on the side. And I was like, you know what, like I might, I, I kind of, if, Greg can do this from Kino Body and his whole website. That kind of sparked back my the whole like getting into business and running my own thing, my own coaching. And uh, so I started a website, GTM Fitness. And that's whenever I started doing some online coaching back in the day. And then that's whenever we came back yeah. uh, full force because you had you were running Mindful Lifestyle. Mindful Lifestyle, yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, so, yeah, we, I think we each did the guest post for each other. We wrote for yeah. each other's site and all that stuff. Yeah, I set, I set up that Facebook group with just a bunch of people. I was like, I don't know, I'm just going to invite them all. And I was in college with that. You were, at that point, you were at Slippery Rock, right? Yes, that's correct. Because, yeah, I won the contest and that was leading into um, the summer, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was leading into the summer and that was the summer before college. So literally like the whole entire summer, I was working on that website, getting it started. And then, yeah, whenever we started to collab a little bit more, that was whenever I was in Slippery Rock. Yeah. University of uh, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I must forgot where I grew up there for a little bit. Then we meet in the Facebook group. So you're running, um, was it Trump? Oh, GTM Fitness. Yeah, GTM Fitness. GTM Fitness. And it was actually going well when we first met, and I asked you. I yeah. Mean, yeah, like I was just saying, away. It, it was It was a lot. Um, it was easier to rank fitness uh, articles on Google, and that's what I spent the whole summer doing, yeah. just writing about topics on uh and then trying to you know get them on google get them out to people and all that stuff and uh and then i went to college and then we we all found ourselves in this in this facebook group Mm -hmm. that was teaching like how to build your own blog and everything like that and that's whenever we started to collab more and all that stuff and let you tell apart because this is i I want you to share some stuff i don't want to hog the mic on this because this is like thinking back to this is like holy shit it's like it's crazy yeah so like um I remember when I was in the car, we call this thing the offer. And essentially this was, we're all in this group trying to build a blog. And when I refer to, we're all, it's uh, me, Trent, Carter Good, and then Tim Burdens. And uh, there was an offer for a job with Kino Body. And Mm -hmm. being Trent winning the contest, me following, we were like, holy shit, we got to try to see if we can get this. And I was just like, I had no idea. I was talking to my buddy. I'm like, be crazy if I got this. But um, so that was when we first met. They actually flew us down to meet us um, in Florida. I was in Michigan. He was in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And 
that was the start of living in Florida for a few years. Uh, dropped out of college, headed that way. Mm-hmm. But before we go into that, I mean, I wanted to talk about the mindset that you had because you had this, and this is something that a lot of people don't normally have, mm-hmm. which is like, you were like, okay, I'm going to win or I'm going to get this done. Here's how. Mm-hmm. You got a job at an Italian restaurant in order to literally have enough food to bulk up so you could win the muscle building contest. Oh yeah. I can't, I completely hopped over that. (laughs) Like you were doing all these things. The methodology of thought behind it was like, okay, I need to get there. Do this, do this, do this. I'm there. And that's like exactly what we were talking about earlier, which is like these small things build up. Like anything that you want to do, you can do. Right. And like everybody thinks you need to follow the traditional path at the beginning. You need to start, okay, cool. I grew up K through 12. Now I'm going to college. Now I'm doing this. But in reality, what do you want to do? If you want to be a doctor, of course, like you have to have the degree. But if you want to go and start your own business, you want to be whomever you start. If mm-hmm. you start, that's how you get there. Exactly. You just have to start somewhere and then you will start to see like all the little trails of bread crumbs. You can just eat those up and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty much like, the mindset of still being so unsure of what I wanted to do with my life. Like Mm -hmm. everyone has that fear, especially right before going to college. So then let that probably push me more into the whole fitness thing. And, um, doing that contest, I was like, if I could win first place and win a thousand dollars, that would help out tremendously because, you know, I grew up not super poor, but there was always a stress of money, like all the time, you know what I mean? Like with bills and all that and not having, you know, money to even like, my parents to have, you know, I love them, mom, dad, I know mom, you're going to be listening to this. Love you, mom. (laughs) Shout out, shout out. (laughs) But uh, you know, like, and that push like drove me to like getting things on my own as in like, I bought my first cell phone, iPhone 3g way back in the day in seventh grade, because I cut enough grass to save up for the down payment of the phone and like six months out of the bill and all that stuff. So I, that practices kept going. And, um, I was like, well, I want to go all in on this contest because I feel like I had a good shot at winning it. And like, what would I have to lose? Because I wanted to get the results anyway. I might as well just like enter this contest and do it. And I was like, how am I going to do this? Like I didn't fully have, like I wasn't working at the time because I wanted to start up GTM fitness. So I didn't really have an income. So I was like, well, what am I going to do to also like have the money for food and all that stuff? So I was like, I'll just get a job at a restaurant. So I worked at a restaurant for a few months during that transformation during the summer so like, and then made friends with like the cooks and all that stuff. So I'll get free food. So I pretty much had all my meals, like basically like the two biggest yeah. meals. And I would just have like snacks at the house or something like that. But most of the time I didn't even need that. So like all my food was paid for. And then that was, even though it's kind of like bland and boring in a sense, but I ate pretty much the same things every single day because I could, I knew what it was. Exactly. And then that consistency to showing up every day, eating those meals. I had like a few different variations, obviously, you know, I, I, got, I had pasta, vodka sauce and <laughs> chicken on top, you know, and then like the big thing of garlic bread or like the spaghetti and, you know, steak hoagies. And I, I had my meals going to the restaurant. It was fun. It was a good time. And, um, and that just like, it is every day. I just like had the mindset, like, I really think I could win this. And it's every day showing up and uh, just putting in the work. And then it just, it paid off. It, it's almost, it's, it's like magic almost yeah. that consistency. Yeah. Um, well, well, I mean, there's with consistency in almost anything. And I mean, we've talked about this a lot with the algorithms with like Facebook and Google and mm-hmm. all that. Everything favors you doing something over and over again. The more you put the energy into something, right. Like, at a certain point you will win. It's not to say you're going to win a contest like muscle building because Trent's got some fucking, you do have some great genetics. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but you will get ripped. You will. Yeah. Like just keep putting in the work. You will get the job running and you'll be profitable and you'll be able to do what you want to do. It works. All those things are things that when you're consistent, like your life does get better. What is it? Kaizen? It's just incremental gains yeah. daily. Yes. Um, I think a big focus too of like the slip ups, the off days, you can't view those as failures. They're no. lessons. There's, there's so many lessons and so many things of like, obviously on um, like Edison and light bulb, you know, thousands yeah. of ways of learning how not to do the light bulb. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, especially like in fitness. Like I learned for those two years that if I eat a ton of shitty food, I'm going to mess up my health and get fat and follow the wrong training program. So I was like, okay, don't ever do that kind of thing again. And that's what obviously led exactly. me to all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big thing too, because it, it just creates a downward spiral in people where if they have a slip up or, or the guilt and it just like, oh, just fuck it, 
you know, in a big yeah. cycle or anything of the sort. And uh, it just that endless vicious cycle, you know. So but, that goes. So what we're talking about right now, you were building that business. I was building mine. They were building yeah. theirs. We all had the same similar. We all we all had a similar sort of intention, which was to build something like Kino Body, like one of those big blogs that was doing profit. And mm -hmm. it eventually landed us with the offer. Yes, the um, offer. That was because we just continued to try for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's a beautiful thing too. I, I know my mindset, you asked me this earlier. I had the goal. I only went to college because I had the idea that college kids had a lot of free time. So I was like, well, I'll go to college. You know, like I, I had some pretty good, like I, I had decent grades in high school, yeah. even though I wasn't like that big of a fan of school. Um, I could have like went to a bigger school just because everyone else would do it like Pitt um, in Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Yeah. But I was like, well, Slippery Rock will be a little cheaper. It has some grants and all that stuff. So I can go there and like focus more on my website and stuff. And I had the mindset of like, I am going to try my hardest to work myself out of college or get mm -hmm. GTM fitness at least big enough so I could leave college before I would graduate. Yeah. And that's kind of what I, I went in there doing it. And yeah, it's just, I, I'm blown away with how crazy it, how it came because yeah. I essentially did do that. And that led to all of us moving down to Florida. Yeah. So we like, meet, what, what were, what we were your thoughts? To, I'm curious to hear your thoughts of like, like college, like, cause you were just studying neuroscience. Yeah. And so I, yeah. So I was studying neuroscience. I mean, my, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. Because I, okay. So honestly, um, during my period of having a therapist and stuff, like coming out of being heavy, mm -hmm. I told my therapist that one, I was going to go down in a history book. I don't know how, but I will. And then yes. two, that my dream career. And I wanted to talk to a counselor about this at my school to figure out where to go for college was to be a biohacker. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> one biohacking is getting outdated. I don't like the term anymore. But two, neuroscience was the easiest route to figure out a way to start to understand the brain, the connection between food and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know, during the time similar to you, I mean, I was doing my own research. I was learning about, you know, I was reading, I was using James Altucher's methodology of four different books at the same time. Nice. Um, I know whenever I met you and how much you read, I was like, holy shit. Holy I was, shit. <laughs> well, I realized like that's how you could learn anything without having a mentor, without doing all these things. The mm -hmm. easiest way was to go, oh, okay, cool. I can do this by X or do this by Y. Learn this book, buy this book. And I never, and I never will limit myself from buying a book because mm -hmm. the stuff you can learn, even if it's one nugget, can change your life. But exactly. yeah, I mean, like in college, I had this one moment and you've met Bailey. But yes. me and him were standing out at the back of, I was in a fraternity in my frat house. And I was like, I can't be here anymore. Like I'm, this is like a weird incubation stage. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be a doctor anymore because I don't want to be brainwashed. I don't mm -hmm. want to do all these things that like, you just have to go on this path. Cause like what right. ended up happening? Mm -hmm. and, no, I had the same thoughts. I mean, and then it, it, it's still a month too. later that came up. Yeah, it's scary too, because I'm sure during that time you had friends, maybe family and all that stuff. Like whenever you started to like say like, because I know like I would start to tell my close friends that I about the Florida and everything. And, and they were like, oh, no, don't do that. You can't do that. You got to mm -hmm. stay in college. Like that's so scary. Like you're risking so much. But there was like that deep gut feeling that I knew it was right, no matter yeah. whatever society was trying to say, you know, Dude. including the teachers, parents, you know, mm -hmm. parents are very supportive. I meant to say family. Yeah. Other yeah. family. My parents, I'm so grateful for that too, because whenever I called them up, I didn't tell them until after, yeah. you know, I was for sure like going to go down to that um, November, I think what, 2015. Totally, yeah. yeah, November 1st or 4th, around that time. Yeah. I forget. But uh, as soon as I told them, like, hey, yeah, I'm going down to Florida to meet the guys and everything, they were like, great. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll my see parents you too. I mean, I led them yeah. in with the, uh, it's going to be internship for six months. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. That one. <laughs> but I mean, it's we're all brainwashed in one way or another, and like I mean, we are too when it comes yes. to like our ability to to want the mm -hmm. freedom of everything. You yes, know, I agree. It's very hard when the majority of your environment is set up that way, and that's why, like, I know we've always talked about it, which is like surround yourself with the people who are going to like allow you and want you to keep doing these things, to think freely, to be who you're going to be. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when 
your route is college because you were born with wearing a certain collegiate sweater or Mm -hmm. all this stuff like your parents are always like let's watch the game let's do this yeah that's the hardest thing to be like you know i don't want to do college because i want to go start a business or i want to do you want to start a business business school doesn't teach you what starting a business teaches you exactly uh, exactly. You can't be an entrepreneur by going to an entrepreneurship, uh, getting a degree. Mm-hmm. Like this comes from practical application doing. That's why everybody from, you know, uh, Tesla to, I just saw a dope big spider. That's cool. I'm not scared of spiders. So I don't really that. much. Get that, get that later. Yeah. I'll I'll let, him, I'll let Jimmy <laughs> hang out. Um, <laughs> whether it's, whatever it's going to be. I mean, everybody talks about like even reading, like when I was, mm-hmm. re- when I read, I'm reading to do. I'm not reading just to read. Mm -hmm. That's with everything that we do, we got to continue to keep that mindset up. Right. Exactly. Which is also a good little thing that like to surround yourself with the people, like you turn me on to like, if you, if someone's in a position where they don't necessarily have that group of like-minded people to hang out with and do the things that they are passionate about books, podcasts, audio books, it it completely changes the game because you're essentially hanging out with them metaphorically it still kind of feels a little lonely but at least you're getting some good information yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's something that i mean exactly. it's important to be able to like understand yourself as well and like mm-hmm. where you want to go next um and, and uh, last note on that it's like if you are having trouble finding the right people to surround yourself with mm-hmm. i was having that in college no one had that idea of starting a website online to follow my passion and yeah. all that stuff and what happened found you tim carter and so somehow it just worked itself out that we all went down to florida to grow kino body seriously yeah i mean but also i mean we talk about this all the time yeah magnets uh energy where you put energy is what you know gets created what's getting pulled to you at this point in time Mm -hmm. well if you're uh, trying to attract certain people and it's not to say you can't meet them at a like a meetup or at a certain event it's a lot harder because people are going with a certain mentality of I'm networking or I'm doing this. And you end up talking to mostly only the same people that you normally would. Exactly. But doing what you normally do, if it's in that, you know, that route, you'll probably meet people or, and I'm huge into this because I don't care. I have no boundaries. I'll reach out to people on Facebook or Mm -hmm. anywhere (laughs) because if, you want to be in a certain circle. It's not like you're trying to push your way in. Of course, always come from value, always come from right. who you're trying to be and where you're trying to go. But you talk to them. Everybody's a person. Like you think you're going to meet a celebrity or a movie star and they're going to be like, oh, bubble, high and mighty. Yes. They're a fucking person too. They're in their head. They're thinking about things that they shouldn't be thinking about. They're doing things they shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's a great point. It's yeah. a really great point. I feel like I struggled a lot with that in the past of like holding like celebrities and all those people like as like the great yeah. and, everything. and they're just humans too. You know, they're yeah. having their own battles and all that stuff too. Respect where they got to, but you can talk to them. It's not yes. like they're too above you to be able to have a conversation. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. So, okay. So we're in Florida, we meet mm-hmm. and trench yoked. Um, <laughs> but we all dive into like, we got to be as fit as possible. Yes. Not from health more from like we're just gonna get ripped so remember we were doing fasting we're trying all this doing just all this random stuff again and then we got fat again for a little bit (laughs) exactly well i kind of still had abs a little bit you still have abs yeah a little bit lose abs Again, there, there were a lot of, you know this, like I had so many weird food allergies, so many gut problems, and there's all these issues, acne a lot still, that even though I was still kind of shredded, like we were saying earlier, like my, the insides were not good, and it didn't reflect that, because I didn't feel how I wanted mm-hmm. to feel, even though I looked decent, you know? Yeah. I mean, digestion gets thrown off, everything gets thrown off, awesome little thing for digestion. Um, peppermint in a... a uh, uh, what's it called? What's the second brain? How do you classify that nervous system? Endo, enteric nervous system. So an enteric coated capsule with peppermint oil and some type of binding oil like coconut oil or um, olive oil, jojoba oil will help to actually get rid of leaky gut. Yeah. 
That's it. Uh, that essential oil. I don't know. I was just listening. I'm just thinking a lot about essential oils lately and how like crazy they can be, like getting rid yeah. of cancer, all this stuff. But um, I want to yeah. look more into that. Was it a podcast you were looking on? Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you a link of a awesome. bunch of stuff. We, um, yeah, that'd be cool. Because I want to get one of those uh, things we had in Florida as well, the, uh, the, the humidifier or the diffuser. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, I got some other like cool stuff about that as well. But um, okay, but yeah. Yeah, we're down. Yeah, say, oh yeah, down in Florida, I, I think we were like almost on the building blocks to where we're at today in terms of health and fitness. Is that where you were heading? Yeah, it was like um, in Florida, we were in like almost an incubation stage. Yes, we're like growing and learning, and you know, in life, you can't always be not at the, I wouldn't say the top of your game, but I would say that with anything, there's a journey to get to where you want to go. Like if you think of Joseph Campbell's uh, hero's journey, Mm -hmm. you have the call to action. And then it's like, wait, what? It's not as glorious as I thought. And like, that's a whole period of time where you're learning and you're getting guidance and you you have your mentors and everything. And, you know, even Joseph Campbell, like what he went to a cabin in the woods for like all these years, just to, Mm -hmm study the mythology learn and break it down and create that and i think yeah that's you were learning that like a lot about health then and that's uh, we all were like how Mm -hmm. it works how to really be healthy of the mind not only the body exactly yeah we dove into a lot of spirituality too and that's the thing it's i wouldn't change a thing you know looking back on it even if you, you get down and like oh this isn't exactly what i thought it would be it, it's hard to accept that. But then whenever you look back, it's like, I wouldn't change an absolute no. thing. Like, yeah. Cause yeah. after like all the building blocks, essentially in health, before we dove into uh, the spirituality and everything, cause I, I think we had a lot of time to focus on like, what were the areas that we saw were lacking in our lives? Mm-hmm. And then we could put more attention to that to actually like go up to that more higher exactly. lifestyle kind of thing that we were after. And um, I remember, you remember the motel days? The good old yeah. motel days, because that was whenever we were starting to dive into more nutritional research. You yeah. Know, Ray Pete and um, sure. uh, Matt Stone was a little bit before that. I believe. A little bit before yeah. that. Yeah. And then we were doing um, G Kundu. That's when we started G Kundu. And that's when, honestly, I would say we were doing the mo. It's when it really ramped up with the Joe Dispenza meditations. Mm-hmm. And so, like, this is a great segue because it's we're basically to the point of which now I'm here, you're there. Actually, I'll yeah. be there in a week or two, whenever. Exactly. That's um, going to be fun. Can't wait. That's going to be. Gonna yeah. Be yeah. And it's the point at which we were, we started to get big on the idea of creating your own reality. And I know mm-hmm. Tom Billy, who talks about this, a lot of people like end up not connecting this a lot of times that all the greats were like, well, I mean, fucking life is life. If right. life is life, like you can create it to anything you want. And like, there's, uh, I actually just created or made a video about this and I'm going to put it out in a few days, but fear and how we have always have this like weird, like illogical fear that holds us back. And it's just like, I can't do this. I can't do like, what's the worst that's going to happen. Right. If you can learn to circumvent that fear or at least just be like, eh, fuck that fear. I don't like, um, there's that exercise where you put a name onto it mm-hmm. and you're just like, eh, I don't really care about that guy when he starts to think about it when you start to think about the fear and then just do what you want to do, you can literally create your reality to whatever it's going to be. And of course you can do it through the meditation, through changing your neuroscience through meditation with Dispenza and all that stuff. But I mean, I know you're huge on creating your own reality, just like, I mean, we're very similar in that. Yes, exactly. Because it was almost a point where what else was there? And I was starting to connect the dots of, even back before Florida, whenever we dove into it, I was reflecting back and it was like, how did I, I was literally trying to focus on having that like-minded group with me, learning the things that I needed to learn to get where I wanted to go. And thinking back to it, it's like, I was focused on that every single day Mm -hmm. and then it happened. But there was also a very big piece of that too, because I know we were, we dove in, we were doing like 90 minute, sometimes four hour meditations to really look within ourselves and learn more about ourselves. And it's still an everlasting journey. (laughs) You know, we definitely came a long way. And like looking back, like I would look at my past self and be like, who is that? It's insane. But um, a big thing that I've realized lately is 
yes, I do believe you can create your own reality, but it needs to be backed up with the action towards that dream or goal. And I think that's something that really hit home for me really recently in my life too. I mean, yeah, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. Like, you know, your purpose, like if you know your purpose or if you know your purpose now, because I know a lot of people get nervous or like, how do I know the purpose for the rest Mm -hmm. of my life? It's like, figure out what your purpose is right now. It's going to change. Let it change. That's fine. Right. Don't push towards something that you don't believe in at a certain point, but because you should be following your joy the best you can. Like, of course, like there's obviously circumstances that people can't just like quit their jobs and go do that, but start to become aware of that. Like what truly makes you happy? Because we only have, you know, a limited time here on this earth. Like who knows, you know, who can really know, but you might as well just like make the best of it and you can, it's very empowering once you actually embrace that. Yeah, dude, a hundred percent. I mean, I think the more that you embrace, you know, you have three different types of time, experiential time, biological, chronological. Chronological is going to go by and you have literally no say in how that works. Biological Mm -hmm. by being healthy or doing all that stuff. You can extend the amount of time that you are in chronological time. Mm -hmm. and decrease your biological time your age and how much Mm -hmm. it's spent but experiential is the one that most people don't focus on and that's your past three weeks just went by like nothing because all you've done is experiences yeah you do you're not doing anything you actually love that you would remember Mm -hmm. and that's like the whole like the mindset of like someone who meditates can i don't know how many experiences i've had where like during a long meditation, I have like all these memories and I can pinpoint and remember doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And I would say that most people can't remember doing nothing. I can't the reason, at the moment. <laughs> the reason is it's very hard to, why would your brain ever remember doing nothing? Mm-hmm. There's no reason There's no- for that unless it's important. And that's where getting within yourself you know, mapping out, going and I'm doing an exercise later today, mapping out my ideal location, what I want to do, who I want to be around, all of that, because then you have that thing to go towards. You know, okay, this is where I'm going next, and this is how I create that reality that I put earlier. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's an example of someone just all of a sudden maybe, um, you know, being, let's just use a job, for example. I don't mean to pick on the career, but it's it's a common thing where all of a sudden they they open their eyes and it's 20 30 years later and the whole midlife crisis because it's like holy shit like where did those years go because they're not creating those new experiences or really following their happiness and everything like that yeah you want to be that old person who's like 95 you know all good for by the time we're older it's 205 you know based (laughs) on technology but um where you're like i could fucking die Cause I lived and I did what I want to do. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, I mean, I want to plan a hop for a while. I think that's going to be awesome. when that's out. Uh, <laughs> There's going to be some crazy things. Yeah. But you know, it's about VR and AR. He's like, I wish I did this. Or like, why didn't I talk to this person? Why didn't I, mm-hmm. that's the worst. And like, it doesn't, you don't have to be rich to have that experience of like, I fulfilled everything I wanted to do, but you just have to like live true to who you are, create that reality in front of you. The one that's in your mind mm-hmm. that you're escaping to constantly because what's internal can be external. And normally if your internal reality is bad and it's not in line with your external reality, that's the point that, you know, you live in hell instead of mm-hmm. heaven. Exactly. And I think you made a, um, an Instagram video post about this on doing something, mm-hmm. the countdown. Yeah. 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 Mel and Robbins, her count to five. Yeah. It's a beautiful practice because all those things like the what if things, mm-hmm. it's tough. Like we all have our fears or insecurities and everything like that. And it's a constant, you know, yeah, to unravel all those things and work towards them. But like, right as soon as you start pushing up against that, you get exactly yeah. it's so satisfying yeah. and it's a it's a it's the habit you keep building that and building that and building that and it's never going to get essentially easier on how i see it because like the, that fear or that nervousness is always going to be there but i think you connect more with that you know it's possible on the other side if that makes exactly. sense yeah so you keep pushing up against that comfort zone and keep stepping the boundaries because you know what's on the other side yeah and before you know it you'll look back and you'll have so much joy within your experiences and you're actually creating the life that you want. Exactly. Day by day. Yeah. Tony Robbins talks a lot about find someone who, if you want to live a certain type of life, find that person, do exactly what they did and you'll get there. And that's like the truth for basically yes. 
everything. So like, if you want to be happy, like fucking be happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, happy people, real, real true happiness, which isn't always happiness, but it's acceptance of when you're sad and everything. Mm -hmm. Just are happy. You can just be happy. As hard as that is, it's like, be happy. Yes. And you're like, what does that mean? It's like, well, can you find something good in every situation? Okay. Then you're on your way. And you got to, like, it's a skill. All, everything's a skill. Right, it's exactly. Not, nothing isn't a skill. And I know your gratitude helps a lot with that, too. Of oh, just yeah. allowing yourself to be happy because I feel, and I've done it many times in the past, it's so easy to get caught up in these little issues or problems that, you know, yeah. other people could have it way worse. You know, so practicing that daily gratitude too helps tremendously. And I think, that you know, mind. like one skill that Trent's a master at is his beer lines. <laughs> so, like, you're trying to give a quick little guide to the, to the Trent McCloskey, and you better create an infographic for this style guide to the beard. I might. I, I dig the, I dig the health little infographics I've been making, but I will admit I had a help with a barber, but that barber was literally months ago cut right down gives me the lines and then i have the trimmer with the foil that can just update the lines whenever i need to but i don't think i'm ever going to go back to a big beard because it just makes my face yeah. so puffy and i got to keep it toned down but that's the secret if anyone's been wondering <laughs> for a while i mean you had like the four beard trimmers you would line it up perfectly with something that was uh like i use makeup i use like mascara yeah like for real or like a sharpie but it, sometimes the sharpie would take a little <laughs> bad idea but no oh, i remember the year early in florida where i had like the chin strap going because I, yeah. I kept making mistakes it was a learning process there's always lessons and everything yeah. and i kept you know up oh, i gotta fix it gotta fix it and before i know it, it's all the way down on my neck only and those are those are some bad months but i yeah. you know but it happens <laughs> exactly but exactly. so you're also big on stress reduction and because uh, yeah. I think one of the hardest things in fitness is stress. Yes. Like people try to lose weight and they go too hard and they stress themselves out and then they end up stress eating. And like that continues to happen over and over again with most different, you know, you're building muscle, you're trying to get healthy and you push too hard to get healthy and then you get stressed out and, oh, stress is antagonistic to health. So you're not actually healthy. Yes, exactly. And then like combine everything else. It's like, then you start eating less calories and doing all this cardio and it's a crazy downward spiral. But I think that all comes down to like, we're so good at draining our batteries. Like it's, we're so good at go, go, go do this, do that, you know, do this for work. And then we got to go do that. And like, even, I, I even feel like watching Netflix and some of those activities are still stimulating the mind. It's not true relaxing. Yeah. You no, know, it's not. Yeah. It, there's different methods to actually like opposite of that would be reading a book with some tea in like a nice kind of red light, you know, a salt lamp well, kind of setting. So, I mean, there's like two, that's twofold. Cause like playing a video game, people will be like, I'm just relaxing. Your heart rate is elevated. Like I know for a fact, cause I was playing what Fortnite and PUBG before yeah. bed okay, <laughs> for like a week while I was on Twitch and it was so hard to go to sleep. Cause I, everything would be elevated, all my stress hormones. But the same happens when you're watching anything that's a TV show. And of course, you're watching a drama or something like that because people don't watch anything that's like ha just straight happy or just normal. You have mirror neurons that are completely replicating the body posture, the thinking, the breathing of the person that you're watching. So of course, you're going to be in a stressed out state. You're not actually relaxing. Exactly. And how many flashes are the... Um, the um screen flashing on the tv is it like 40 50 60 frames per second or something like that yeah yeah it's, it's like probably yeah, that, around 60 is like high def yeah so like that's stimulating the mind as well and like most people are eating meals during that time and in a stressed state and just not even being mindful of how they're eating how they're chewing and all that stuff and that all contributes to just stressing out the body more so i think the biggest thing is is like if you can start implementing small habits on reducing stress yeah that gives you that energy that we talked about earlier in the podcast to actually make that little first change. So, so like, what's like three areas that you would say that are perfect for that? As in like to reduce stress? Yeah. For reducing stress. So you, Cause you just brought up the habits, like three habits that you like yeah. to do. Definitely meditation. Mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, we dove a lot into yoga. Yeah. Uh, whenever we were in Florida. And I feel like I've been doing a lot more restorative yoga too, just to focus more on breath, not necessarily for like the, the yeah. actually a lot of people kind of work out. I don't view it. shouldn't be viewed like that. Yoga is not a work. Focus on, on, you know, the breath and everything, which I will say is like the third one too, is breathing. 
Breathing is so important because everyone is hunched over at work all day in that stress state, hunched mm -hmm. over, probably only taking short breaths. And when's like the last time you actually take a full deep breath all the way down to your belly, all the way that it filled up and your ribs started to puff up. And then you just exhale softly and do it over and over again. Like that's yeah. like six breaths. Always through the nose. Yes. Never through the mouth. The mouth is for eating. The nose is for breathing. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, yeah. Like if you're ever in a stress state, not just in the morning, throughout like work, you're stuck in traffic, someone cut you off, something like yeah. that. Those six deep breaths in through the nose, hold it for a second out a full six you will definitely feel some relief oh, because yeah. most people forget to breathe but i and also know you like chewing differently so let's talk for a minute about like your the way that you approach eating and chewing and mm -hmm. that sort well, it's actually of digestion starts in the mouth right and most people just take a couple bites just enough so they can swallow it and in saliva the lipase that's what's actually going to start breaking down the food because stomach acid most people think, oh, it's like just an incinerator and it will just digest everything. But then that food, which is also a thing of acid reflux, that undigested food will sit in the stomach and cause all those problems. But then that undigested food will pass into the intestines and then that bad bacteria will start to feed on that, leading to gut issues like leaky gut, uh, SIBO, like small mm -hmm. intestinal bacteria overgrowth and all that stuff like that. And literally like the, small, like the biggest bang for your buck is just starting to chew and be more mindful of your eating. That's why I started to... Uh, bring up like the frames per second because most people yeah. are just shoveling food down their face. So like if you want to make a good change, I would recommend whenever you eat dinner, uh, turn off all the electronics or whatever. If you're by yourself, you're with somebody, just gather around the table, you know, and even just practice gratitude for your food as well, you know, because yes. most people don't, they just shovel it down super fast. And then taking the time to actually chew and taste your food and all that stuff and into it's like a mush or whatever. I made a graphic like 15 chews, but mainly yeah. it's like, you know, chewing to its mushy and then swallowing, you can enjoy it more. And funny enough, whenever you actually do that, most people get full way before they even finish the meal. Like sometimes it's hard for me to even finish a meal, but I always feel better. I feel yeah. light after. I don't feel bogged down or bloated or anything of the sort. It's literally all from chewing. It seems so yeah. simple, but it's kind of like what we talked about earlier, that if you just start chewing, that's a small habit that can lead to a little bit of a win that can set you up for something else. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one of the quick and easiest weight loss tips is like chew slower. And then you're like, oh, I'm full and I digested better. And wow, I'm mm -hmm. losing weight. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah but I think Very people like way. miss the biggest part of that. And it's, it's huge. <laughs> it's yeah. huge, like, oh, just chew to eat slower. So you eat less food. It's like, no, that's literally impacting your health and how your whole digestive yeah. system works. It's not that you even needed that more food. It's you were just eating so quick. Your body didn't register what was going on. Exactly. And it's almost like that bad bacteria is feeding on that food and not even from that. And then add in all the processed foods people are eating. And that's why they like have bad cravings for the wrong things or constantly need to eat and feel hungry because they're not satiated exactly. because their body isn't actually getting those nutrients. Totally. Essentially. Well, yeah, man. So I want to be respectful of your time, Trent. Where can Thank people you. find you and what do you have coming out in the near future? Definitely a lot of more Instagram posts. That's for sure. Uh, Trent underscore McCloskey, but I'm going to be in relation to podcast soon. Really excited for that. We'll definitely have to do an episode together. Oh, yeah. And uh, the website, TrentMcCloskey.com. Awesome. Awesome. The main, and then Trent main. offers rad coaching where he comes to your house and he helps you chew slower. No, but he <laughs> does have awesome coaching program um i have the whole thing like i know how to hold the jaw and you know move it <laughs> properly and yeah so. we call it, he's a mastication expert uh, <laughs> so but no thank you for being on trent and oh thanks for having me man you know it's always a pleasure yeah man we'll we'll definitely be doing another one of these soon um just dive into some more goodness yes it's all about diving into that goodness <laughs> <laughs> awesome. all right take so, care brother peace